Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks, and today's project is this cool pair of shoes. Now, these are Alan Edmonds McAllisters. I know they look like Spectators. Spectators, I believe, are two tone ones, right? But they didn't start out this way. Uh, a friend of mine named Doug Giles um, basically refinished the uppers. These are his shoes. And um, we're going to be doing full soles and heels today, JR soles and heels. And um, we're going to basically try to get a little creative. Maybe do a little blind stitching, do a little French tip. Not sure yet. Once I start, I'll, I'll basically know. Um, now, he also um, refinished a pair of Maxfields, which he sent to me a couple of weeks back. And um, I redid, the, redid that shoe for him. And then we basically you know, gave that away to a person who, who commented on, on the videos. Uh, the winner was very happy, by the way. And uh, he also makes these um, the shoe bags. This is one of his creations. That's kind of cool. Now, those are his initials. So I guess you can put the description of what the type of shoe it is. That way, you don't have to go searching through, you know, all a lot of shoes that are in bags. You don't know which one's which. So um, this way, it, it's kind of uh, it keeps the shoe protected, and uh, and you know what what shoe is which. So I think these are going to look very nice once they get done. All right, so let's get started. All right, let's get started. Here we go. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. What's up, what's up with the scenario? You guys remember that? That was like from the 90s, I think. Now we got to do is we got to protect the uppers, right? Let me show you guys what I use. You got to be careful now. This is, this tape is not meant for all leathers. You got to kind of maybe test it out. And when you're removing it, you've got to maybe apply some heat to it, like a hair dryer or something, or a heat gun to release that glue from the tape. So you got to be careful; it doesn't take the finish off the leather. It's not going to take the finish off the leather here because I already tested it. And there she be. Come on now. <clears throat> I know this is a little bit long, but you know it's not meant for shoes. Basically, I do that, and she's done. Make sure the tape is sticking to the shoe. <clears throat> And you've got the uppers protected. Voila! Oh, this is, uh, I got it from Home Depot, by the way. It's like in the painter's aisle, you know? So now, basically we're not going to salvage anything here. Just take everything out. be a good day today we're gonna make it a good day today your destiny is in your hands not my destiny your destiny and she goes and this is all done <clears throat> we're gonna remove that cork okay we're gonna replace that cork the whole thing now Doug got Doug purchased these shoes. I'm looking for a tool. Doug purchased these shoes on eBay, so they were not his shoes to begin with. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can find my tool. So, most people are concerned with the footprint of the original wear. Now, most of the feet are very similar. You have ball of the foot, you have the big thumb, well, not thumb, but big toe. Could you imagine somebody has a thumb on their toe? You know what I mean. And, um, and you got your arch, you got your heel. 
Now, majority of the imprint is going to be very similar. Not a 100% match, but very similar. And most of the time it's okay. All right. So, even if the even if the cork was okay shape, I would still have to replace that. I don't want to leave it the same. Some people leave it the same, but everybody does it differently. Now, once the cork once we put a new cork in, I'm going to put a little bit of turp turpentine here just to kind of release that uh, glue. Once we put a new cork in and put a new sole on, we're going to put it on a um, little press where it's going to flatten that footbed down. I'll show you guys that when the time comes. This way, when Doug starts wearing these shoes, he'll make his own print on on the footbed. Now it'll still be, it'll still have a little bit of a curvature, but not as much as it does now. It's not going to be brand new. I mean that's impossible to be brand new unless you replace the footbed, which can be done by the way. It's not an impossible task. I've done it before. But that's the backbone of the shoe, so you got to kind of be careful. You don't. Um, lose the shape of the shoe when you take it apart. I'm not going to stab myself. Remember the abs of steel, man? Oh, shit. I did that too hard. Uh, I, I said a bad word. I guess I'm going to have to bleep that out. But you guys have heard that before. It's not like you guys have, you know, virgin ears. For Christ, crying out loud. I almost said something else. Yeah, I tend to do that sometimes. You know, it happens. For human nature, you know. Okay, now we're going to glue a little bit of that material back. You see that right there? That's the gemming. That's what holds the footbed to the welt, to the uppers. It's not out of shape, it's just kind of loose a little bit. All right, let's continue. All right, so <clears throat> we get to pick the stitches now. Now, sometimes on most of the Allen Edmonds, the newer ones, not the older ones, the older ones have a smaller thread, and it's kind of <clears throat> sunken a little deeper onto the welt, so you can't really kind of scratch it on the surface like this. But it's easy. It, it, this way, it just it just comes right off. Now there's a little machine over yonder I can use, but I don't feel like moving the camera over there. I'd rather just do it by hand. Oh, well, my last video was talking about that ASMR stuff. I mean, my God, man! Everybody like, well, not everybody. Some people are like, no, don't do that. I shut it off in six minutes, couldn't take that. I'm like, okay, okay, simmer down, simmer down. It was just a suggestion, there's no big deal. A call came in and I got cut off. As I was saying, some people got a little, a little crazy about, they didn't want to hear that, they didn't want to, you know, listen to that ASMR, whatever it was. I'm not doing that. I don't have 50 cameras around or 50 microphones for you guys to hear all the little minute details. It's okay. Calm down. It'll be all right. Simmer down. Just sit back and just relax. All right. Now, get back to business. Now, most of the Allen Edmonds do not have shanks. Some do have wooden shanks. The company went through kind of like a transitional phase, I guess. You know, some models will have them, some models don't. Um, but they don't come with metal shanks. So this one we're going to put this beefy shank. This is called the three rib shank because it's got one, two, three ribs. Would you look at that? Okay, it's going to give it some nice support. Now, the shape right here, we need to kind of bend it a little bit, right? 
So what I like to do here, just two taps, and gives it a little bit of curvature. Not much, just a little bit. And then glue that, and then glue our cork. Now, there's lots of different ways of doing corks. You have hot cork, which is like a um, like a peanut butter paste type. It's hot. They squirt it onto the cavity of the shoe, and then they basically just take a little hot iron handle tool and they flatten it out. It's one way of doing it. Manufacturers have those machines. We do not. There was a product at one time we could heat it up and reuse it, but you know what? It's it's it doesn't make a difference. A cork is a cork. These come in big sheets. Okay? I cut it out to the shape that we need. Even though this is a little bit thicker, okay? Once it gets glued down, I sand it flush. That fills the cavity. Bottom line is that the cavity gets filled and it's flush when it's done. Okay, so it could be done either way. Like I said, most of the manufacturers will have those um, those hot cork machines. Repair shops don't have those because if you're not in the manufacturing it, using it every single day, it's not worth getting it. Okay, so we're going to glue the shank and glue the cork together. Once it gets done, that'll be nice and structurally supportive. Once this gets done, we'll get the sole ready. We're going to use 1011 JR soles. 1011 is the thickness, basically. You guys see that? 1011 is the thickness of the sole. Okay. These are, these are, man, I mean, tough, tough leather. Very good quality. I like them. Now, they they cost a pretty penny, though. It's not cheap, you know. So, but if you're going to pay for premium quality material, you know, you're going to, you're going to have to pay. Does that make sense? If you're going to have to pay for good, you understand you guys are like detail man wow I don't know where you guys learned all that detail work from so now what I'm doing here I'm going to mark the sole because I'm gonna stamp some fun things on there just want to kind of get that get that logo in the center and we'll cut that off and then we'll make a um, we'll stamp some some fun things on there. Oh, wait, did I say that? Yes, I did. I'm going to say it again because it's my video. I say what I want. All right, let's continue. So we've got the cork sanded down. The shank is inside, by the way, underneath the cork. You see it there. See it a little bit there? Got the soles cut out, stamped. I'll show you in a second. Now you want to make sure that to inspect the welt, make sure it's in good shape. Okay? Because sometimes, you know, it does come loose. And um, last week I had one. We, uh, we put the sole on. And unfortunately, um, as I was working on it, I noticed I noticed an area that was a little loose on the welt. I'll show you in a second. Hang on. So if you if you pull the if you pull the welt, you know, forward like that, you'll see the stitches that are holding on to the bed and the uppers. Some are stitched by black thread, some are stitched with white thread. Okay, whatever the case may be. For example, this pair. So the sole was on there, 
and as I was looking at it I could see the stitches which means that the welt was loose but you can't get to the welt stitches with the sole being on the shoe I had to remove it and this was the mess that I created okay so you gotta inspect the welt when you have the shoe apart and you're sanding it. Be careful not to sand too much, or you're gonna bleed, or you're gonna break that thread. See that black thread? That's holding the welt onto the shoe. So basically here, see that piece right there? That piece needs to be replaced. Restitch back together, put a new piece here like that, reassemble it and put the sole back on. It's not a big deal, it's just a little delay. This is the mate to it. So I mean it's not it's not it should have been it should have been caught before it was glued on okay it should have been because before the sole was glued on you know look it's, I'm, I'm not taking the blame off my shoulder I'm not because I do have help who helped me Mr. T gives me hand with some of my work and um, unfortunately I didn't keep my eye on him as I should have had very carefully but there's no way I, I would have let the job continue at that stage so we removed everything and we're going to take care of that before we put the sole back on all right a and e enthusiasts and beto's leatherworks now a and e enthusiasts it's a facebook group okay and um Basically, it's all about Alan Edmund. Well, I shouldn't say that because you can post whatever you want on there, right? But majority of the posts are about Alan Edmonds. And there's a bunch of bunch of nice guys on that site, you know, and then every day they communicate with each other and it's a good bunch of people. So Doug is one of the moderators along with me on that site. So instead of stamping it Allen Edmonds, we, we're going to stamp it a and &E Enthusiasts. Okay. All right. I'm going to let this dry. Should we watch it dry? Should we watch it together? Do you have a fun? Man, you wish that you could smell this. Woo! I can't get too close to it. I mean, I'm already happy, but man, I'm going to be a lot happier if I stay this close. All right, let's continue. All right, we are back. You guys know what time it is, right? It's hammer time. You guys that you guys hear that fan in the background? And there's the air conditioning fan. I can't turn that off or it's gonna be hot as heck in here. Spray the sole down a little bit. Soften it up a little bit. Make sure everything is centered. Yes, uh, my fun day. Here we go. Not done yet. No, sir. One more time. 
children. Exposed there. Can't have that. Nice. I'm gonna have to put a piece of tape right there just to protect that. Alright. So when I come back, I'm gonna show you guys this contraption right here. This is like a medieval torture time for shoes. All right, let's continue. All right, so now we've got a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol and water mixture. We're gonna spray the footbed a little bit just to soften it up. Not too much, just a little bit. Now, I've got this covered in plastic because I don't want the metal touching that liquid I sprayed in there and, and rust, rusting in and then the, the footbed will be dirty. Now once this gets put in okay kind of line that up here Make sure that that metal foot is in position of the footbed. And what you do, you just crank this wheel. Basically, it's pushing down the footbed flat with the base of this contraption, sole press, whatever we call it. I think sole press. Okay? And just let it sit there for a couple of hours. I don't think you need to put it too many. You know, you could you could let it sit there for a couple of days if you want until it thoroughly dries. But I think a little bit will help flatten that foot bed out. Now this contraption here, it's also heated. It's it doesn't work with the heat anymore because well, there's no plug. It's funny how it works that way, right? I guess when there's a plug, you plug it and it heats up. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Hmm. Science. Okay, so, but that's okay. We'll, uh, one of these days, I might take it apart and restore it and put new wires and plugs in there, but right now, it's going to do with all that. All right, let's continue. It's a beautiful day today. So while the shoe is drying, I figured I'd take a little break. Let's continue. Well, not not yet. I'm just reading Let's Continue, you know. I know this is a big mug, but I don't fill it up. This is one of my customers gave it to me, actually. So I use that sometimes. This is a hookah. For those of you who don't know what a hookah is, this contraption here. Now, it's got a cage with it, right? So it doesn't topple over. It's a small hookah. So they make that little cage so it doesn't fall. So as you're tugging on the hose, it doesn't fall over. It's funny, when I bought the property, people said I was crazy. I was stupid, wasting my money. But there was nobody around me here. I was in a big open field with my building just kind of in the middle of it. And... Uh, Fast forward 20 years later, they build all around me, and 
the property has multiplied numerous times, at least 10 times what I paid for it. And now the people who were basically talking, you know, all that trash back then, they're like, oh, good job, good for you, we're happy for you. Like, yeah, sure you are. It's all right. I don't care. I've never really listened to anybody in my life. I've always wanted to do what I wanted to do, and I've done it, you know, and um, so far so good. Sure, I've listened to advice, of course, but I never really followed it, because in my heart I felt like that's what I wanted to do, and I did it, and I think it's paid for. Now I've got tenants upstairs, and the property's making me some income, you know, 20 plus years later. I'm on the middle of the road, middle of the city. A lot of traffic goes by here. And um, sometimes I sit on my porch here and just, just watch the world drive by. Oh, some, some people might ask what flavor I'm using. It's Blue Mist. I like it, you know, it's kind of, I don't smoke too much, once in a while, once in a blue moon when I just kind of relax a little bit. When we go out, you know, we go to Middle Eastern, it's not really a club, it's like a live entertainment restaurant type. We'll eat, we'll drink, we'll smoke a little bit, dance a little bit, you know, and enjoy ourselves. I mean, we all work too hard and this world is just is upside down and that little bit of time that we have on on this world why not enjoy yourself yeah everybody's stressed out it's okay it's normal everybody has a stressful life but you need to make time for yourself for your mental stability sometimes you just have to kind of go out and enjoy yourself next day you know you can get back to your worrying But you gotta give your mind a little bit of time to kind of unwind and relax a little bit and enjoy yourself. All right, this time it will say, let's continue. All right, now we've got the sole trimmed. He'll sand it off there. Now we're gonna mark <coughs> for the Triumph French Tips. You really got one shot at this. <clears throat> okay. That's it. Now while we're here, I'm going to open up a open 
open up the sides. Normally we, we would open up a channel here to stitch the sole. We're going to do a blind stitch on this pair. Now you don't have to do the blind stitch underneath the heel. It's just the front part there. So we're going to start about a centimeter from the line where the heel is going to go. And simply just slice into the sole. Again, there's there's lots of different ways of doing this. I like this method. Now, some people, you know, cut it really thin to peel it back. I like to keep it a little bit thicker because what happens is if it's too thin. Then you start wearing it. That little that little piece sometimes peels back. But most of the time, when people do these, they they tend to cut it like that, not on the edge, but about maybe a millimeter inside the edge of the sole. So when you're done, you see that little line on top. I don't do it that way. I I like to get it right on the corner. So when those two meet. After you trim it, you, you can't, you're not going to see that little line where it was cut. Everybody does it differently. This is how I like doing it. Once it gets stitched, oh, before before that we open a little channel here, so the stitches are countersunk. If you don't do that, if you just stitch the sole, and then you glue this flap down, and then you're going to have a little bump where the stitches are. So if you countersink it, then then you don't see anything on top. That's what we call blind stitch. Most of the better quality shoes will have this kind of a construction. We're going to let that sit for a bit. We're going to trim the edges, put our French tip on, heels, well, finish the bottom. I don't know what I'm going to do on the bottom yet, but I'll figure out something. All right, let's continue. All right, so we're at this stage where we're about to attach the heel base to the shoe. Now, these are JR heel bases. Yeah, I make my own. Now, the ones that come from the factory, they're they're basically they're not like they're supposed to be for Allen Edmonds, but you can change that. You can simply sand that down a little bit and have the inside part of the heel a little bit higher. Most of the Allen Edmond heels, if you see here, that's a little thinner than that one. So we do, we're gonna duplicate that. The inside part's gonna be higher than that. So what the inside part, basically what it does is, 
it gives it a little bit of arch support. Okay. Now, whenever we resole shoes, we we have to attach the heel base to the shoe. Sometimes what I do, I glue the top lift on, okay, and then nail it from inside the shoe. With Al Nedlands, you can't do that because there's no there's no sock lining there. That's just basically the footbed in there. You can't nail through that. So whenever you're nailing the base, you got to do a short nail so it doesn't come through there. Now, normally, I like to put this together. Where's my other top lip? Well, it's here somewhere. I'd like to put this together and sand the breast of the heel nice and smooth, okay? But unfortunately, you have to attach this to the shoe, nail it on there, and then glue this. Then you come back with a coarse sandpaper and you sand that, okay? So before I assemble that together, I gotta find the heel. Okay. Before I put this on the shoe, I take these two pieces and sand it, make that nice and even, and finish dyeing the inside part black or brown, wherever you want. This way, whenever you get to attach the heel base to the shoe, you can nail it, you can come back and glue this exactly where you had sanded, so there's no sanding to do after the fact. This is what I did for the bottom. Now they're not done yet, they'll be a little cleaner and shinier. A little different. We get to attach the toe piece, the French tip, and then this uh, heel base on. Now this, I sanded it and balanced everything. I think by now, if you all have been watching my videos, I like to do things a little differently. Now I just got to find that top lift. Where the heck did it go? Alright, we'll find that it. it's here somewhere. Now for the French tips. I know where the other top lift is. I just put glue on it. It's drying in front of the fan over there. With a pilot hole. Well, I'm doing good with my tools today. Somebody cleaned up after me. That's why I can't find anything. I hate when they do that. Alright, let's continue. I'll look for the drill. Let's continue. I hate it when people clean up after me. I always tell them don't touch anything on my workbench. I guess he's doing me a favor, but not really doing me a favor when I tell him not to do it. So now we've got this uh, French tip on. Now, you'd be very lucky if you find a shoe that is exactly the same shape as a French tip. Obviously, this one we need to trim a little bit. No big deal. <coughs> So as you can see, the breast of the heel is nice and clean and sanded. I don't have to touch that once I glue this piece on. Okay, so I do that beforehand so there's no, there's no issue of, of that inside breast of that heel getting all marred and scarred up. <coughs> now these are threaded nails, ring shank nails, whatever you guys want to call them. Now some people with five on there. Okay, everybody does it differently. Sometimes I overdo my jobs. Now these nails can't be too long, like I said, because it's going to go through the footbed. 
and come through the foot, which is not good. Yes, nine of them. Hey, let's just have our roll. You do whatever you want. You want to do five, you want to do four, you don't want to do any. Your job. So we're almost there. Once we get the heel top lift on, we'll trim it. Add some decorative nails on it. All right, let's continue. All right, welcome back. We are done with another project. You want to see? Oh, you already saw the uppers. All right, here we go. I think it turned out pretty good. French tips. Now, these are not brass, okay? These are stainless steel, and they're just kind of gold-plated, okay? When I first got these, I thought they were pure brass, and I was so excited for them. And um, after I started sanding it, I found out that, oh my god, it's gold-plated. It's not brass. But it looks kind of cool. Okay. Um, when I was at a convention at a Germany show, there was a company who was selling these actual brass tips, but they were three size thicker than these. So you almost have to cut the whole sole off for that to fit in there. And the concept is great, but they need to make it a little bit thinner in order for me to be able to use them. Um, cost, the cost was very high too, so I don't blame them because it was pretty thick brass. And it only needs to be about an eighth of an inch or so, and uh, it would work out for these uh, French tips. So, I think it turned out pretty good. I think Doug will be happy. Now this was like a $30 find on eBay. Okay. Now the amount of work that went into it, of course it's it's a lot more worth a lot more than that. What I did was approximately $400 worth of job. Um, and then what Doug did, I don't know what he would charge, but I can guarantee it won't be anything under $150. Now granted, everybody, you know, to each is to own what they want to do. This is his personal shoe. And he always wanted to have that spectator, spectator style, and he wanted to do himself. So now that the work is all done, this allows for many years to come. All he has to do once in a while is just to condition, polish him up, and keep it keep up the you know care for the uppers, and you're done. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me uh, on the last video. I asked you guys to um, please subscribe. Um, I guess there's a proper etiquette for YouTubers to request viewers to hit that subscribe button I don't know these things all I know is that there weren't there were a bunch of people weren't subscribed so I figured you know what hey remind you to subscribe so if you like the video and if you want to see more please hit that button below that bell button the bell button in the corner all right thanks a lot we'll see you guys again take care